Welcome to part one of the residential heat pump water heater series. This three part series will focus on how to model heat pump water heaters serving a single dwelling for compliance with the 2019 building energy efficiency standards, also known as the energy code. This includes heat pump water heaters serving single family buildings, as well as individual heat pump water heaters serving low rise multifamily dwelling units. In part one, the introduction includes an overview of how heat pump water heaters work, efficiency ratings, factors for selecting units, design considerations, and what sets the standard design for compliance when using the performance approach. In parts two and three, we will demonstrate how to model a generic heat pump water heater and a specific brand heat pump water heater using each of the California Energy Commission approved compliance software applications with part two of this series demonstration using Energy Pro and part three demonstration using CBEC Res. A heat pump water heater works by using electricity to transfer heat from the surrounding ambient air to the water in the tank. This is called an air source heat pump or air to water heat pump. This process is similar to how an air conditioner works, only in reverse. Heat pumps extract heat from the surrounding ambient air and transfers it into water stored in the tank using the refrigeration process. This process for heating water can be two to three times more efficient than a similar electric resistance water heater. Typically water heaters contain two sources for heating water, a heat pump and electric resistance heating elements. The heating source, which includes components such as a compressor, evaporator and fan are generally located at the top of the unit. While some units may have these components located separately outdoors with a tank located indoors. As air is forced through the heat pump by a fan, air passes through a component called the evaporator where heat is extracted and transferred to a gaseous refrigerant. The byproduct of this process creates cold dry air, which is then exhausted to the room or ducted to the outside. The heat pump then compresses the heated gas into liquid, further increasing its heat, then circulates the heated liquid through a refrigerant loop called the condenser, thus transferring the heat to the water in the tank. This process repeats until the water reaches the desired temperature. When a demand for hot water occurs, like washing hands in a sink, the heat pump water heater relies solely on the heat pump to maintain the water temperature in the tank, thus saving energy by not using electric resistance heating. When a higher demand for hot water occurs, like a long shower, some heat pump water heaters temporarily switch to use electric resistance heating to heat the cold water entering the storage tank, and then switch back to using the heat pump to maintain the water temperature set point. There are two primary metrics for determining the energy efficiency of a heat pump water heater. The first metric is Uniform Energy Factor, or UEF. UEF is a measure of a water heater's energy efficiency and indicates how much energy the water heater uses to heat water, which is called output, and the energy to power itself. UEF is the metric used for water heaters with a heating output less than 12 kW, or less than 12,000 watts. This is roughly equivalent to 40,941 BTUs per hour. The higher the UEF, the more efficient the unit. The second metric is coefficient of performance, or COP. COP is a measure of a heat pump's efficiency and indicates the ratio of power in kilowatts of the heat pump in heating mode, or in cooling mode, to the power in kilowatts that is supplied to the compressor. COP is the metric used for water heaters with a heating output greater than or equal to 12 kW, or 12,000 watts. The higher the COP, the more efficient the heat pump. In addition to energy efficiency metrics, heat pump water heaters may also be rated based on their advanced performance features. NIA, or Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance, is an alliance of utilities, manufacturers, and other market actors who develop the Advanced Water Heating Specification, or AWHS, to advance higher performing electric and gas hybrid heat pump water heaters. This specification is used to classify water heaters into tiers, tiers 1 through 5, which serve to provide higher levels of consumer satisfaction and energy performance. The higher the tier level, the higher the energy efficiency and advanced performance features it has. 
The NIA Tier 3 heat pump water heater specification includes improved features such as minimum cool climate efficiency or CCE, Energy Star compliance, a 10-year warranty, intake and exhaust ducting capability, and lower sound levels when the equipment is operating. Using a NIA Tier 3 heat pump water heater may be used for a compliance credit when using the performance approach. A list of AWHS qualified products is available through the NIA.org website. You can see the link in the description below for more information. There are several factors to consider when selecting a heat pump water heater. The first factor to consider is equipment efficiency, which we just covered. Remember, the higher the efficiency rating, the more efficient the unit, which equates to lower operating costs. The second factor is first hour rating, or FHR. First hour rating indicates the volume of hot water in gallons the unit can supply per hour, starting with a tank full of hot water. This rating is often used to size a heap of water heater since it combines a number of other factors such as tank capacity, energy source, and how much heating capacity the unit has. The third factor is storage capacity. Heat pump water heaters store hot water in a tank and come in various sizes based on the storage capacity and range from 30 to 40 gallons up to 80 plus gallons. The larger the tank capacity, the more volume of hot water is available. Additional design considerations for selecting a heat pump water heater are based on its functionality. Since heat pump water heaters extract heat from the surrounding ambient air and produce cold and dry air as a byproduct of the refrigeration process, the location of the unit is important for it to function efficiently. Common locations for heat pump water heaters include a garage, a basement, or a crawl space. These spaces are sufficiently buffered from the outdoor ambient air temperature, and the cold, dry air produced by the unit is generally acceptable in these spaces. In colder climates, where temperatures fall below freezing, locating a heat pump water heater inside the conditioned space is a viable option although it's important to consider how to evacuate the cold, dry air it produces. Locations you may want to avoid include locating a heat pump water heater outdoors, which may void the manufacturer's warranty if the unit is not designed for outdoor exposure. If you must place the heat pump water heater in conditioned space, avoid locating it near thermostats used for space heating and cooling, which may result in improper heating or cooling of the home. Avoid locating heat pump water heaters near bedrooms or gathering spaces in the home to avoid noise produced by the heat pump water heater. Locating a heat pump water heater closet or other confined location is a viable option, but it's important to provide the required clearances and sufficient amounts of supply and exhaust air based on the manufacturer's requirements needed for the unit to function properly. When modeling low-rise residential buildings for compliance with the 2018 Energy Code, the standard design for domestic hot water, or DHW system, serving individual dwellings is based on the prescriptive requirement found in section 150.1 C8 and the proposed water heater type being either gas or electric. When the proposed design specifies an electric water heater, the compliance software sets the standard design to a generic brand heat pump water heater, which includes the following specifications. A NIA Tier 3 heat pump water heater with a capacity of 50 gallons, a UEF rating of 2.0 with a unit located in either the garage or outdoors depending on the climate zone the project is located in. Refer to Table 24 in Chapter 2 of the Residential ACM Reference Manual. In addition to the water heater specifications, the prescriptive requirement also includes a compact hot water distribution or CHWD system using either the basic credit or enhanced credit depending on the climate zone the project is located in. Refer to Table 25 in Chapter 2 of the Residential ACM Reference Manual. When the project is located in either Climate Zones 1 or 16, the standard design for a heat pump water heater also includes a Drain Water Heat Recovery System, or DWHR system. To receive a compliance credit for a heat pump water heater, requires using a specific make and model number unit, which must be listed in the NIA Advanced Water Heater Specification list of qualified products as a tier 3 or higher rating. Understanding what sets the standard design for a DHW system is important for making recommendations for improving the overall building efficiency to either meet or exceed the energy code requirements. This concludes part 1 of this series. Be sure to catch either or both of the next two videos in the series where we will demonstrate how to model a generic heat pump water heater and a specific brand heat pump water heater using Energy Pro and CBEC Res. 
If you have any questions regarding how to model heat pump water heaters, either leave a comment below or email acetv at energycodeace.com. Please consider clicking the like button if you thought this content was helpful, as well as subscribing to the Energy Code Ace YouTube channel. Also, click the notification bell if you would like to be notified when new videos are available. As always, we appreciate you watching this video. Have a great day.